Peace, party people. Welcome back to Where My Killer Tape At. Season 2, episode 2. Word is born. Yo, thank y'all for all the love. Um, we're going to do the usual stuff that we usually do on here, right? Wow, that's crazy. Redundancy, right? We're going to talk about, uh, you know, how to approach women again. Uh, the health segment. And we're actually going to continue our Men Ain't Shit segment as well. And we got a, got a review on here. I got an old uh, throwback too as well. Shout out to Camp Low. But yo, check it out, man. I love y'all. I like the rhyme, the rhyme, the rhymes. All of us are born with the miraculous ability to determine the direction from which sounds approach us. Let us venture into new and uncharted lands. People get shook up, you know, when I'm introduced as God. You got that good hair, too. You're the first one out there with a dashiki talking that crap. It's like a jungle sometimes, it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Like a jungle sometimes, it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. Hey, pull up, hop out, air made it look sexy. They won't take me on my element. Nah, take me on my element. Yo, for this episode, I'm sipping on some gin and tonic. I, I use uh, Seagram's gin. I use this other gin sometimes, but Seagram's is actually the best, man, because it has like this little kick. This little kick aftertaste, it reminds me of ginger, even though it's not ginger. Um, and then I use this uh, uh, tonic water from this company called Teach 3. It's really, really good. I mean, it's probably the best tonic water to use for if you're going to make a gin and tonic. So it's real easy. And just throw a little bit of lemon, a little bit of lime in there, you know, square a little bit of lime in there and you're good. But that's what we're doing today. Work. Real quick, like this only happens to me like since I left New York City, because you know, uh, and you know, and then I, I take that back, like since I left New York City, but it doesn't happen to me in places like LA or like um, you know big cities, you know like DC. It doesn't happen in those places, but it's like as soon as somebody learns that I'm Dominican, they'd be like, "Ola, ola," right? And I'm like, "Yo, just a FYI, Dominicans don't say ola, man. Like we don't we don't do that, man." So. And I got to, like, constantly educate people. And I get it. You know, people want to, you know, they want to find that common ground. Um, they want to, like, get to know you a little bit better. They want to kind of, like, break the ice. I, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like I might meet somebody who's Muslim. I might say, assalamu alaikum to them. But usually they're like, oh, okay, yeah, walaikum assalam, you know. But they be like, hola. And it's like, I'm Dominican, B. We don't say hola. If you walk up to a Dominican person and say hola, they they going to look at you funny, man. Just letting you know that. Am I going to teach y'all what to say? Yeah, I'm going to do that, right? You probably heard this before, but usually when we greet each other, we say, que lo que, right? But don't, don't be like, que lo que, que lo que, you know what I'm saying? Or we might say, dímelo, dímelo, tigre, you know, like, dímelo means tell me. Que lo que means what is what. And then um, the last one, one thing we usually do, Dominicans call everybody primo, if you male, uh, or prima, if you female. So it's like, um, you know, that's what we do, like, primo, primo, we consider everybody, and that means cousin, right? And unfortunately, Spanish does that gendering shit, so it's like, both the masculine and feminine, I know, I know. So we say primo, prima, um, and that means cousin, we call it, we consider everybody cousins. So just want to give you FYI on that, just be careful when you say all I love. Now, I will say this, if you go to a Dominican person, you do, you do say, dímelo, right? Um, they go probably take you home and feed you dinner. And, feed, and get you some, some rum or something. Just to let you know that. Because they love when people do that. Word is born. <laughs> Medina Green. DCQ. Law I2. <laughs> Medina Green. In the last episode, I talked about race literacy. Uh, shout out again to T with QJ. Um, I think a good book that you can start, you know, to, to understand how race works, particularly in like Latin America, you know, which is considered South and Central America, um, is to check out a book by Joel Augustus Rogers or J.A. Rogers. He wrote several books, but 
he wrote this three volume set, volumes one, two, and three. That's really dope. And what I like about it is actually for me, it was like the first book. And I read that. Oof, somebody actually stole my copies. And and I think I have Sex and Race Volume Three somewhere. I didn't I, I I didn't loan them out. Somebody took the other two. But anyway, in it he deals with demographics and numbers of how many slaves actually were bought to different parts of that of that of Latin America. And then he even has some census data from there. So I think that's pretty dope. So if you want to check something out, definitely check out J- any really thing anything about J. A. Rogers, particularly his uh, Great Men of Color. But Volume Volumes One and Two. But Sex and Race will definitely help you out. Um, you probably got to dig for it because this hasn't been published in a while. So you probably got to find some copies. You might have to pay a little bit extra, but that might help you out. Work. What you reading, my man? Word is born for Black History Month. Uh, just want to shout out the homie Neddy Yakor for. I'm currently reading the second of her trilogy, Binti Home. The first book is called Binti, and actually she released the third book, but I'm going to finish the second book, of course, duh, right? So I'm reading that. Yo, it's dope. Like, like I love her stuff because her stuff is futuristic, right? But it deals with a lot of stuff from pre-colonial Africa. It's really dope. So it's about this young girl who has locks, and she comes from a particular village, and she attends the school, and her on her way to the school on the ship, it gets attacked by these aliens that, like, just kill everybody on the ship. Um, that happened in the first book. So in the second book, they're going to talk about what happens after that. So I really can't wait to read it. Um, but I'm going to start reading it today. But anything about Neddy for I just want to say real quick that Neddy's book, um, Who Fears Death, is going to become, I think it's a Showtime movie. It is going to be produced um, by my man who actually wrote Game of Thrones. I can't remember his name. What's his name, yo? That chunky white dude with the glasses. But that guy. But anyway, shout out to Nadia Core for you. You deserve all the accolades, all the awards, all the props, and all the loot. We love you. Peace. Yo, happy 50th to the God, Rakim Allah. Man, like 50 years old, five, the big 5 old. Let me just say this real quick, man. Y'all, y'all got to be like more careful on the grams and on the, the Twitters, like, because y'all post something and you be like, oh my God, I hope he's not dead. You know what I mean? And they be like, oh yeah, by the way, happy born day. You be like, whoa, you know what I mean? So I guess, I think what we need to do is we need to do more of that, like more of like big enough birthdays for, for our notables. And I think that'll probably take away from that stigma. Because I'd be like, oh, snap, why is he all over my TL? Oh, my God. But happy born day again to the God Rock Kim Allah. Word is born. Yes. I know I'm mad late with this, but... um. Tariq Nasir and Dr. Umar got beef. Like, I know I'm mad late, but I just think that it's, it's mad funny. Not that they got beef. Like, you know, if you got beef with somebody, you got beef. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you got beef with people and, like, other people not going to understand why you had beef, but you got beef, right? Because, yo, I think, quite honestly, beef is natural. Anyway, I digress. But um, I just thought it was funny how, like, how, like you know, like, you could tell who's a G, and you could tell who, who's who been in beef before by how they talk junk. But Tariq Nasid says something to the effect of, I'll tie you up and slap your titties around. Like, and yo, I'm not trying to be funny. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to engender motherfuckers or anything like that. But that sounds rather homoerotic, Tariq. Like, for real, for real. Anyway, they both hate black women. So what do you want, right? You can take the Bronx. Uh, let me, no, that's not how they said it. <laughs> you can take the kid out the Bronx, but you can't take the Bronx out of the kid, right? So one, one after it was an evening. It was it was night. It wasn't late though. I know it was like it was right before the holidays, so it was like a lot of people shopping. 
So my daughter works at the mall. I don't even I don't even mess around with malls because that, that's just not, you know, this is not my thing, man. So anyway, um, I went to pick my daughter up. So like I usually pull up right in front of the mall where the entrance is and just wait for her there. So like sometimes she'd be out there waiting for me, you know, but sometimes she don't be, especially when she doesn't get off at the end of the day. Anyway, so I'm pulling up slow, right? And there's like six cats like grilling me, yo. Like they was like grilling me hard. Like, I mean like like bending over to see into my car. Like they were looking at me hard, yo, as I was coming up. So right, I pull up, I pull up, and they I mean, yo, I swear to God, they like looking in my car like you're looking for something. So I stop a few feet in front of them. And they all like walk towards me like really fast. So I'm like, oh, these cats, okay, okay. So I, I jump out like, yo, what's up, what's up? And and the cat was like, hey man, hey, 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 are you my Uber? Yo, I felt mad stupid, yo, mad stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, I think I think Chris Man, yo, so January 28, 1997, that's 21 years ago at the moment of this recording, which is on January 28th. You probably hear this after January 28th. Um, what is it? Was it Profile Records? Profile Records released the dope album Uptown Saturday Night by Camp Low. Camp Low. Wah. Remember that? Remember them cats? Um, actually, I, I love these cats a lot. Um, and, and there's several reasons why, you know, not only because they're from the Bronx. Um, but, of course, it's made up of the, the duo Geechee Suede and Sonny Chiba. Um, of course, named after um, 70s uh, black exploitation icons, right? Um, and, and, you know, I think it's really dope. Um, the reason why I love them so much is because they came out during a time when Boom Bap, boom bap which is a sound that was kind of like defined by the likes of DJ Premier, the Beat Miners, or the Boot Camp Click, um, D- digging in the Crates Crew, DITC out of the Bronx, and several other notable artists. Um, and I think this album at the time was like a departure from that. And they were from the Bronx, um, which kind of like helped bring out that boom bap style of sound. And we talked about a long time ago, several episodes ago, on um, we where my killer tape at. And it was produced by Ski, who I think is probably one of the most underrated producers in the industry. Um, Ski produced a lot of dope stuff. And I think... If you listen to this album, you can really see how he stands out. He, I mean, he's produced mad joints that you got to really check out. So you get a chance to check them out. And Ski used to be in a group called Original Flavor, which actually Jay-Z was on one of them songs when he was doing that, when he was doing the Das Effect style, which Jazzo, his mentor, claimed that Das Effect stole from him. So it's real interesting how you have all those connections. But anyway, um, there's a song on there that I like that he did with my man from Diggable Planets, um, which I think is dope. But it's a really dope album. Their rhyme, even their rhyme style is mad different from what everybody else was doing. And I thought it was really, really dope. But I think overall, Uptown Saturday Night is a, is a classic hip-hop album that I think is underrated and a lot of people don't even put in their top 25. And I think you should check it out if you haven't. Um, but again, it came out 21 years ago. Word. Chronicles and man ain't shit. Yo, what up, party people? Um, just real quick, like, um, I want to talk about the use of the term females, <clears throat> and it's funny because you see a lot of uh, you know, a lot of women say, hey, you know, I don't like how you use the word female, right, or females in a particular sentence, and guys are like, well, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, etc., 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 etc. Now, there's several reasons why you shouldn't use the term, like. And what I mean by that is I can see if if we're talking about, you know, like animals or whatever. So you say, oh, you know, the dog was a female, you know, the dog was a male. Right. Um, but I think a lot of it is the usage of pronouns and how you should refer to people. You know, you should say most women or some women or. And it's funny because when I talk to my students and I hear them say, um, you know, how females are. And I'd be like, what do you mean? Female dogs, female birds, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, we can get into that. We can get into why or why not you shouldn't use the word females. I, I ask you to get use your Googles on that one. Um, but if you want to debate, you know where I'm at. That being said, um, my whole thing is that if someone says to you, can you stop calling me this, then you should stop. If somebody says to you, if, can you stop doing X, Y, Z, like, you know, can you stop, um, you know, 
poking me? Can you stop touching me? Whatever, you should stop unless you're not doing it, unless you're somebody who wasn't doing it. And I could see you getting upset at saying that. But um, it's just, you know, funny, man. Just, you know, if somebody says that to you, then just stop it, right? Do they really have to give you a reason, right? I mean, you know, do you have to give white people a reason for calling you boy? No, you don't. They just, yo, stop calling me that. That's it. And it should be just like that. Plain and simple. Or uh, I'm gonna say two things about the Monique situation when she was asking us to boycott Netflix. Uh, Mitch, I don't think she's. Um, I think she's right on so many counts. Um, but just two things that I noticed, um, and this is outside of misogynoir. I know I have to define that at one point, but misogynoir um, is something that we see happening because I didn't see people do the same thing to Amy Schumer when she asked for more money. Anyway, um, one thing is that what I always loved about Monique is that she always knew her worth. She always knew her value. And I remember she talked about how, you know, her dad was always like, yo, you're beautiful. You can do whatever you want. That she like, he was like always encouraging and she always attributed to that. But she knows her worth. She knows her value. And I think that I think that's an example that we should all take. And number two, the last thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to leave it alone, is that most of us, and when I say most, I should say all, right? Because I'm, I'm actually thinking 99.8888%, right, are actually underemployed, right? We actually are. And, and that's another reason why they tell us not to, to talk about salaries, because if you did talk about salaries in the workplace, you would learn that some people who do actually less work than you do and put in less work than you do actually make more money than you do even though you might qualify more than this, particularly if you're black, brown, and you're a woman. So let's talk about that. So we can learn a lesson in this in A, knowing your value and realizing that a lot of us, and, and, and you know, present party included, are underemployed. Work. Yes. I got a question for y'all, like, how y'all let these flat earth people come back into the fold like they shit is legitimate? Like, they coming into spaces like, yo, we have to consider that the earth might be flat. What, like, where they, where they come from with that? Like, like, even in the mythology of Christopher Columbus, do cats say that the earth is not flat? Like, even in that instance, like, so how these cats come back into the fold, man? Don't blame it on the internet, though. Come on, man. We, you know, we can't, you know, people will say, oh, you should respect people's perspectives. Some perspectives don't even need to be respected, yo. Word. So I had a few conversations with some folks and I'm going to do a little bit change over here. Um, and their question was, what if Black Panther is not good? And, you know, when they said this to me, I had to kind of like pause and and be like, I, you know, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that it's going to be dope, right? There's no doubt. Like, I never woke up in the morning and was like, oh, what if it's whack? No, I don't do that. So I'm going to list the several reasons why Black Panther is going to be lit. So I'm going to do this real quick. Um, it's going to be in segments, of course. So the first reason, number one reason, is that it has a stellar cast, right? Uh, you got... Um, um, you know, Chadwick Boseman, you know, you have Angela Bassett, you know, you have Forrest Whitaker, you have Lupita Nyong'o, you know, I can go on and on of who's on here. You got old girl Danny Gurria, like, we can go on and on of who's in here that's going to be dope. Um, and okay, true indeed, there has been some movies that I've seen that they had a stellar cast, like they had Academy Award winning people on, this, on the, on the uh, cast and the movie was lackluster. That, that's happened before, true indeed. So that, I could see that that argument being shot down. But come on, man. When have you seen a movie where Angela Bassett is in it and it's whack? To be honest, I haven't seen a whack movie with Forrest Whitaker in it, to be honest, right? Like, let's, let's be real, right? Like, even that crazy movie he did about Ben, uh, um, I was going to say Ben, I mean, my bad, dude, um, with about Idi Amin, you know what I mean? Like, and he actually did a good job. I just didn't like the makeup, the makeup stuff that was in it and the problematic things they had in it. But other than that, he did his thing, right? So, come on, party people. The second thing is Ryan Cooler, the director. Let me just say a couple of things. He's done Fruitville Station, and he's done Creed, which I'm done with the Rocky stuff, but Creed was actually great. 
Um, and he that's like the first time Sylvester Stallone actually acted. Like, Sylvester Stallone's a horrible actor, but he did his thing there. But Ryan Coogler, like, his stuff is actually dope. Like, his stuff is gritty and dope. And what I noticed about Ryan Coogler as well is that he understands the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's one thing to be a director. You could be a good director, but you, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is his own monster. It's his own thing. And I think he understands it. And what I love about the way Wakanda is going to be said is that it, it sits directly in the MCU. Like, I, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I know that the last Infinity Gem is going to be located in Wakanda. It just, it just makes sense that way. The next thing I want to say is, yes, about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We're already there, right? I think it's dope that um, it's set in there. And I know people are like, why are you tripping? Well, the reason why Spider-Man Homecoming was so dope was because that it was centered in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I think that is crucial. That thread is what really makes all those movies that Marvel has put out in the last 15 years either great or pretty good, right? We can argue that, right? Um, and I already said that the big reveal is going to be the Infinity Stone. I'm telling you, it's going to be there and it's going to lead right into Infinity War. So all that tie-in, making it part of the web that is the MCU is crucial to that. And I think Ryan Coogler knows that and he puts that in there. Also, going back to Ryan Coogler, he's bringing his own definitive style to this. If you look at, if you look at this movie, none of, the, none of the other Marvel movies are like it. And true indeed, when you look at like Captain America, you know, Thor, you look at the Avengers, they're all kind of like, they got kind of like their own style, but they actually like really look like they're all in the same scene. Like, and what I, I know I'm, I'm not putting in the right words, but it's all kind of like seamless. That's what I'm looking for, right? Um, but I think when you look at Wakanda, the most advanced nation on the planet Earth, like it really stands out. It really, really does. So I think it has its own definitive style that's going to kind of separate it from the other MCU movies. Right. But st- still centered in it. Right. Um, also, the costumes. Oh, my God. Like, have you seen the costumes like cosplaying from this day forth when it gets released is going to be change dramatically number one you're gonna have more people of color involved particularly black people you see more and more black people involved with cosplaying number two is going to really set the standard it's going to change the standard because a lot of the costumes you see which i love you know are you know harken back to african traditions right but also have a futuristic st- uh, appeal to it so it's afrofuturistic right Ooh, i use a nice word right i always wanted to use that on this podcast it's afrofuturistic and i think this is what's going to make this movie dope Right. But also for cosplaying, this is going to be amazing. Like I, this is a movie that you probably got to watch more than once just because of the details. Right. And that goes to the costuming and the design, like all of that stuff. Like if, if these these folks better get nominated, man, like I'm telling you. So and don't get me wrong. I've been waiting for this movie for decades. Right. Even when Marvel, I'm not going to lie. When Marvel was talking about, oh, we might do one. I was like, y'all ain't going to do one. But ever since he was in Civil War and people have just gone nuts. It's going to be crazy. So those are my reasons why um, Black Panther is going to be lit. I know I said I was going to do it in parts, but I was able to put everything short and sweet. Um, But I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to go see it probably a couple times. um, And you do too. Word is born. Black Panther is so lit. Word. Yo, real quick, a brother's on Stitcher now. So you can find us on four different platforms. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Google Play. You can find us on SoundCloud and on Stitcher. Where my killer tape at? Yo, really check us out there. Yo, if you want iTunes, please subscribe, leave reviews. Your show is mad, 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 mad love. I'm telling you, B, because, yo, I'm trying to get it out out here. Uh, Word is born. Um, If you want to talk about the show... Hashtag where my killer tape at. Please do that, man. Or just where my hashtag where my killer tape at wherever you at. You know, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I'm not on Facebook, so I guess I don't know if you want to, you can. But um also real quick, um, I did some things on here. I'm gonna put that stuff in the show notes, so check it out. But please show a brother some love where my killer tape at. What up? Just an FYI, man, because some of y'all be bugging, right? You could be white and married to someone black. You could even have kids with that person and still be racist, right? 
You can never have said the N-word in your entire life. You could be white and do it right and just never say the N-word in your entire life, right? And, and have actually black friends, right? Black and Latino and Asian friends and still be racist. That's very possible, right? You could even be a Democrat, right? And support racist policies. And just to let you know, that makes you racist, right? Let me just drop a little jewel on you. If you're a black man married to a black woman, you can still hate black women. You can have a black daughter, right? And still hate black women. Think about that for a second. Work. Real quick, I don't mind debating cats online. I really don't. I, I, I'll do it any day of the week. Like I said, man, we could do this. We can go out in the streets and we can meet up and we can do this. Like, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I just have an issue with YouTube scholars, like people that, like, they get all the information from YouTube. And look, I love YouTube. I probably spend about maybe an hour and a half a day on YouTube. Sometimes I spend, like, three hours on Saturday mornings on YouTube because they have all my Deezus and Murrow um, episodes and everything. And I also get my Capoeira and my B-Boy vids from there. So I spend a lot of time on there. But I think, like, we got to be careful because a lot of people will debate you. And then when you ask for evidence, they'll send you YouTube links to these poorly edited videos of splices of movies and horrible, horrible photoshopping and horrible, horrible PowerPoint presentations. And they try to put that up as evidence. And, you know, like you guys got to stop that, man. And there's usually dudes that do it. Right. Um, and, I, and I don't like to use the word ghetto scholarship because I heard a lot of people who call that as ghetto scholarship. I don't because I'm ghetto. So um, I take offense to that. Um, but, yo. Go to the library, read some books, use your Googles, you know what I mean? Go to some lectures, you know, take some classes, like learn the theory, do all that stuff, learn the statistics, the demographics, all that stuff. Read academic journals, like do the real knowledge, man. Don't be coming in here doing YouTube scholarship stuff and sending it to people like, look, you're actually Hebrew. No, the YouTube, that YouTube video does not prove in any which way or form that I am a Hebrew. So let's chill with that work. I just and I know I'm mad late with this one. I'm really late, but you should definitely check out Mudbound on Netflix. I'm I'm late and I'm really mad that I'm late. Um, it's directed by D. Rees, and um, she did Pariah, which is another another phenomenal movie. Like it's a mad dope movie. If you haven't seen that, and and that's on Netflix too. It wasn't that was an independent. Um, Pariah was an independent, and Mudbound is actually a Netflix production, um, but. It's an amazing movie, um, but also Mudbound, um, and it stars, uh, and I'm not familiar with this guy, Garrett Hedlund, right? I am familiar with Jason Mitchell, who plays Easy e an NWA movie. He does both of them. They do their thing. Um, Rob Morgan is also in it. Um, you probably, he's, he's done a lot of, um, he's done a lot of uh, movies. He's that, he's that dude that you see in man movies that you're like, I know that guy, but he played the snitch in Daredevil. Um, and he's also in um, another Netflix production. Um, I can't believe I forgot this. But uh, Stranger Things, uh, season one and two. But Mary J. Blige, yo, look, you guys got to do this, man. Go back to that movie that Q-Tip put together. I can't remember the name of it. And Mary J. Blige plays the mom. She does a horrid job on that. And I was like, don't ever let her act again. But I don't know. She went to school. She did a Think Dizzle. I don't know what she did. Maybe it was the divorce. But in Mudbound, Mary J. Blige earned that Oscar, yo. She earned it. Um, if she doesn't win it, you know, I'm not going to cry, you know what I mean? But if she wins, man, yo, that is well-deserved. But everybody on this show really, like, on this, excuse me, on this movie, really does their thing. And I think the the um, chemistry between um, Garrett Hudlin and Jason Mitchell is Hedlund. My bad, it's Hedlund, right? They just, their chemistry is just there. They don't have a lot of scenes together, but when they're together, man, it's, it's dope. So, yo, go check out Mudbound. And, yo, shout out to D. Reeves, man. Like, yo, word is born, man. Man, you're just dope, and I just can't wait to see more work from her. It's going to be really dope. But check out Mudbound. Word. Scientific power. 
My mental violence will shower, devour at a crazy rate. Yeah, I whirlwind through cities, influential, scientifical power. My mental violence will shower, devour at a crazy rate. Yeah, I whirlwind. Word is born on um where my killer tape at health segment. I want to talk about, and I and I know I brought this up before, but I just want to bring this up. Um, there's no such thing as a magic bullet. There are no magic bullets. I'm sorry. I, I don't know who told you that. There are no 20 minute abs. There are no drinking a particular shake twice a day that's going to help you lose weight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's just none, no magic bullet. I know it was a repeat, but I think it's something that we have to be careful of because a lot of people try to sell you that. A lot of people try to sell you that. And people um, spend a lot of money that they don't need to spend on these kind of things. And I could think of a bunch of pyramid schemes that do that. And it's messed up that, you know, there are still snake oil salespeople that try to sell you that stuff. But no, there isn't. Um, it's all work. It's all work that you put in. It's the work that you do when you get up in the morning before you go to bed, you know, hitting the gym, hitting all that. However you get down, that's all hard work. Nobody got there, you know, by taking shortcuts. Nobody got there by doing 20 minute ads, none of that. And I think... Um, if people really see it like that, and I get it, I get it. You want to see results quickly. We all do. We all want to see results quickly. When I'm learning a new difficult move in Capoeira, you know, I really try to get it down as much as possible. But you know what? It it doesn't work like that. I just have to work at it. And it's frustrating and it pisses me off and I can get and I get hurt a lot. You know what I'm saying? I fall down a lot on my face and that's not cool. I get it. But at the end, I trust me. The results, you will be much happier with the results, right? And the key is not only to get there, whatever goals we have, the key is not only to get there, the key is to stay there, is to stay there. So it has to be a lifestyle change. It cannot be a small change. So yes, um, if you do want that APAC, which I'm, again, we've talked about this before, you got to put in the work. This is not going to happen by buying a particular product one time and working on it for 20 minutes a day and it's going to fix you up. This is not how it's going to go down. And maybe I should stop using the abs as an example, but I just think this is such a good example. Work. In, in this segment of how to approach women, it's more, it's more pre, a precautionary idea. And look, it's really, really, and this is something they can use, you can use across the board. Like if you're going to approach a young lady, which is cool, you know, you know, like I said, we talked about this before in several episodes, but what you want to do is make sure you give people their space. Um, you know, if you see a woman you want to talk to and, you know, like try not to like get in her face, you know, like, I don't know, sometimes like y'all meet at clubs and stuff like that. And I think there's a way to do it, um, you know, number one, without yelling. Uh, and there's a way um, to do it without getting in somebody's face. Because, you know, sometimes, and you could you can have the best hygiene. You can have the, pers- the best hygiene or whatever. You can, you know, smell great. And that's another thing you got to be careful, too, like cologne. Like, I guess since I got older, you know, certain scents, like, really bother me. So, um, and I haven't been sensitive to that. And I'm pretty sure other people feel the same way. So anyway, let me go back to what I was saying. Give people their space, man. Like, y'all got to be real careful with that, you know, um, because it could come off as aggressive. It could come off as bothersome. So in the previous segment, we talked about body language and paying attention to people's body language and how they might feel. So like if you approach a young woman and she jumps back, that's a, that's a sign that you might want to step back yourself, right? Or if she kind of like um, like turns and like, faces away from you that's just another sign you know and, and go back to the first episode of season one where we talked about rejection so you know pay attention to body language and you know space just like just you know and I, and, I, and I look at it from something from a personal perspective i don't want nobody all up in my grill unless it's somebody that i know and i'm really really cool with and we have that kind of relationship um and you know you could be fine as hell i don't if i don't know you like that i don't really want you in my face like that so i think that's something that you should be you know aware of and then like again watch other people's body language 
um, you know, be real careful. So I guess I guess this one would be about proximity, right? I hope this helps out. And, you know, you know, if you have any questions of what you want me to talk about, any ideas, you can hit me up on Twitter at Dan Trezomi or at um, Omi's podcast, O-M-I-S-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. And, you know, you can just ask a question or something that you want me to talk about when it comes to how to approach women. Peace. So yeah, um, this segment again on atheism. Now, one one question that a lot of people ask me, and they you know they ask me this quite often. It's probably one of the top three. They 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 ask me, um, like, were you abused while you were in the church, or you know, or was it like, did you just have an epiphany? You know, like you just woke up one day. Like they they felt like something crazy negative happened to me, for me to like become an atheist. To answer that question, no, actually, my time in the church was actually pretty dope. Uh, when I was young, um, and I'm talking about my teen years, the priest that, that that worked at the school I was at, right? Shout out to Rice High School in Harlem, right? Um, it's no longer there though; they closed like in 2015. But they taught a lot of them were followers of this dude named Archbishop Oscar Romero, who later on became one of my heroes. Um, and we, I'm gonna talk to y'all about that later on, but on another segment, another story, right? But Archbishop Oscar Romero, he taught liberation theology, which, you know, in the black church, black liberation theology is the basis of the black church, right? That being said, look that up. And Martin Luther King was a, a liberation theologian, as was Martin Delaney, Alexander Crummel, so on and so forth. They were all liberation theologians, right? You know, even uh, my man Richard Allen, you know, that started the AME church, African Methodist Episcop Episcopalian. He was also liberation theologian. Anyway, um... These young priests, a lot of them were in their early 20s. You know, like they were like fresh out of college, right? And um, they taught me liberation theology. So my experience actually, um, you know, they were the first ones to give me my speaking engagements, right? I used to read scriptures in front of the church. Like I was young. So my experience was actually pretty good. Um, I didn't wake up one morning. It was like, oh, my God, I'm, you know, God doesn't exist. Oh, that sounds crazy, right? Oh, my God, God doesn't exist. I didn't wake up in the morning and it was just like, God doesn't exist. Um, it was a slow, long process of me becoming an atheist, right? It was it was years, decades of studying and researching and praying and meditating and crying and agonizing and sweating and staying up late and thinking about it and worried about what's going to happen and am I going to get struck by lightning? Am I going to get fall down into the sewers and get eaten by piranhas because I blasphemed against God, right? Um, am I going to be you know, hypnotized by some attractive woman to join a Satanist cult or whatever, which Satanist cults actually aren't that bad. But, you know, um, stuff like that, I was, that was going to happen to me and none of those things happened to me. Like, And at the same time, I slowly learned different things and learned about other cultures and how other people got down. And that that's pretty much it. It's not, I guess people want to hear like some, I guess some testimony, right? Like, yo, how did, yo, what happened, son? And it wasn't nothing like that. I just... It wasn't. It wasn't like it was very slow. I must say strenuous. You know what I mean? But nothing crazy. Nothing crazy happened to me, man. Um, and I slowly, you know, at one time I was agnostic, and then I became an atheist. But I can, I can, I'm gonna probably sit down and write down the different things that led to me becoming an atheist one day, and maybe I'll just read those out to you. But I hope that helps. Work. Hey, shout outs. Uh, first of all, shout out to my man AG. Um, he used to be a co worker of mine. He just had his born day. Man, he's young, man. He's 28. But I love you, brother, man. I love you a lot. So shout out to him. Um, shout out to my man Will, Billy, aka Billy Will. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, what's up, man? It's been a minute. It's my man from Detroit. Shout out to you. Um, and then again, shout out to my girl Shell. Um, she just did a feature. She killed that shit. Word is born. So shout out to you. You've always been supportive of me. Um, way more supportive than I am of you, but you'll be killing the game, man. Word is born.
Peace. Once again, man, thank you all party people for checking me out. You know, we on four platforms now. We just got put on Stitcher. If you want to continue the conversation, um, hashtag where my killer tape back. Killer spelled K-I-L-L-A-T-A-P-E. Again, once again, another bang. I hope you enjoy it. You know where I'm at. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Trez Omi or at Omi's podcast, O-M-I-S podcast. Until we meet again. Peace.